Hi, I'm John Douglas, owner and operator of the Redline Shop, RedHotParts.com and CozyDog.com. We're the largest supplier of reproduction Redline parts in the world, and we do hundreds of restorations for people. Today I want to talk to you probably about the most difficult process in a Redline restoration, and that's how to paint the casting. Um, today we're going to start out using our paints. Um, they come in a half ounce bottle and they'll paint anywhere from 5 to 15 cars and of course we have some hardener. Now the hardener is uh, highly recommended that you use the hardener. What it does is it, uh, it allows the paint to bond and then you don't have to clear coat and what it does is it leaves a bulletproof uh, finish. If you don't use the hardener you're really susceptible to chipping and you have to clear coat it afterwards. So hardener, no clear coat, shiny surface, bulletproof, uh, no hardener, you're going to have to clear coat, it's acceptable chipping. Uh, the paint, our paints, you can thin them down with a little lacquer thinner uh, if, they're, if, if it's too strong for you or too thick. Now I want to talk to you about a few things that you're going to need uh, during the uh, painting process. First of all is you're going to need an airbrush, of course. I use an Iwata HP 100. Uh, there are dozens of manufacturers of airbrushes out there. Badger, Pache, Testers. They all make decent airbrushes. Most airbrushes are good. Uh, this happens to be what's the gravity feed, meaning the paint is gravity fed down to the chamber and then of course the air hits it and it creates a uh, spray. Then there's of course there's suction feed where the paint comes up from the bottom and shoots out. Doesn't matter, they all work. I just happen to like the gravity feed. It is more difficult to use because the paint will, will spill out versus the suction feed where it's in a cup and it doesn't spill as easy. Then of course you'll need paints. Um, you can use other paints, you don't have to use these. These are specially formulated colors. Uh, you're also going to need uh, something to hold your casting and your casting of course. You're going to need something to hold your casting. Here I have a, a little device. It, what it does is it comes with a magnifying glass on one end and a, a alligator clips on the other end. What I just do is take the magnifying glass and put two alligator clips on it. That way you can clip onto the front and the back of the car. And then of course you got total control while painting it. You can get all the nooks and crannies because you can rotate it, you know, any 360 revolution any way you want. Then of course you're going to need a place to paint. A paint booth, uh, a room that's ventilated. Uh, you definitely want to be somewhere where it's ventilated. And then of course you want to wear a respirator. Um, this stuff is, is toxic. You don't want to be breathing it. Um, now today I'm not going to use a respirator because I'm going to have to talk. So kind of the, you know, always you you'll, you'll need a respirator okay so we've got that out of the way now I want to talk to you about uh, the process I'm going to show you a close up as I do this but I want to run through the processes really quick on uh, the different coats that I use now the first two coats what I call are, are tack coats and uh, what I do is I spray just really lightly over the top of the surface of the car and then uh, just get just a very light misting I do that till how many coats it takes to, to get a nice even like tack coat. And then of course after that now I'll spray the bottom of it and get all the bottom parts. And I don't worry too much about a tack coat on the bottom. I just want to get the like underneath the fender wheels and stuff I want to get that painted. And I pretty much do that in one or two coats. After I've done the tack coat then I go to what is called a, uh, a filler coat. And these are three or four coats, one coat, two coats, whatever you need or whatever is desired to get your color and your intensity. And those are, are heavier coats, um, and they that's where the color starts to develop, and you can really see it pop, starting to pop. Once you've got your desired color and your sheen, then you can go to what I call is your uh, wet coat, or your final coat. Now this coat is, what, it, what I do is I paint the whole thing really quick and make sure the whole casting is wet. Um, otherwise if you paint half of it and the other half is dry you're going to get overspray from the half that's wet that you're painting onto the dry half and then you're going to kind of get a little rough surface there and you don't want that. 
Um, your last coat you want to be able to shoot the whole thing and make sure it's all wet so it all lays out nice and flat. And then from there uh, you can go into your drying process. I like to put it in a, an oven for at 170 degrees and bake it for a couple hours. Uh, some guys just let it sit. I prefer that method. I've always used it. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and go to the paint booth. Uh, we'll get some close-ups and I'll try to get the camera angled in and try to show you uh, as best I can the process. And I will try to implement some still pictures uh, when I uh, am ex expressing a certain you know point uh, that really needs to be addressed. If I have to take a still picture, I'll try to get a still picture of it in there and that way um, we can go ahead and you can see the whole process. So uh, let's head over to the paint booth and uh, we'll, we'll get going. Here we are in our paint booth. Uh, as you can see there, there's our ventilation system there. It's off right now, so when it's on it's kind of loud, so I'll try to talk over that. Uh, of course our casting set up there and our airbrush and our paint. And we're going to be running about, uh, about 20 pounds PSI. I like run between 18 and 20. Uh, you can paint this paint anywhere from 5 to 30. So uh, let's go ahead and get uh, the first step going. Okay, here we are in our paint room, paint booth. Uh, we're going to mix the paint now. We're going to paint this casting red. So what we do is we put, uh, oh, put about that much in the cup there. Eh, maybe about a quarter cup. A little bit more than that, just past a quarter cup. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to put a few drops of hardener in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight drops of hardener in there. Then we need to mix it up and close up our paints. And I mix it up by uh, backflowing it. What I do is I put my finger over the nozzle and then I push the airbrush and it bubbles up. This particular airbrush is dual action, meaning uh, when I push down, air comes out at different variables. The more I push, the more air comes out. And pushing back will adjust how much paint comes out. So you can not only can you adjust how much paint comes out, but you can adjust how much air comes out at the same time. And that's called dual action. So I don't want any paint to come out, just air. So I cover this up and bubble it up really good and mix up the hardener that way. Okay, we've got our paint mixed up. Now we're gonna shoot, we're shooting at about uh, 10 pounds PSI right now. I'm not really putting a lot through it, okay. First I'm going to do is go ahead and shoot the bottom side and get all this down here. Get the edges all painted. The fender wells. Anything that you can see when the car's finished, anything where you can see when the car's finished, uh, from underneath the car. So you want to get all those. In the factory, uh, this was, some paint was shot up in here. So you want it to look factory. You can pretty much do it in one one coat, just light coats and build it up. Because it doesn't have to be perfect. And once we've got the bottom of our casting built up to the desired color, then we can go ahead and start our first coat here. Our first coat is going to be our tack coat, of course. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll start out about right here and sweep over it with a nice tack coat. Back, sweep, back over, back over, back over, flip it around, down, nice light tack coat, get it from the different angles, ok, 
Okay, so we've got a nice, nice even tack coat here. And we're going to go ahead and let that sit for about 10 minutes. And then we'll go ahead and hit it with one more tack coat. And then we'll go from there. Okay, we've got first tack coat dry in about 10 minutes. Go ahead and look at the bottom, make sure it's as dark as we wanted. Go ahead and get any spots there where it didn't get enough. And we're going to go ahead and end it with another tack coat. Just going to work our way right from the bottom of the car all the way around front, back, side, and then I want to go ahead and get in the crevices here. We want to make sure we get those little fins in there, and of course, right in that little spot where that engine sits, I'm going to get that in there. Okay, we got a pretty good tack coat on there now, as you can see. Uh, you can start to see the color coming through. Okay, and that, that's a good tack coat. Uh, it looks like a very light coat. You can see the color, but then uh, you can see the metal too. So it's a good tack coat there. And then what we'll do is let this dry for a little bit, and then we'll go ahead, I'll turn this uh, ventilation system on so I can get some of this paint out of here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and shoot our filler coats. Okay, we waited 10 minutes. We're back after our we well, got finished up with our tack coat. We're going to go ahead and shoot our first filler coat, get some color intensity in there. Uh, I am going to have to put my respirator on, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint, and you won't hear anything from me. So, here I go. Okay, there we go. Just a second. Let me get a breath of air here. Okay, this is red what we're shooting here, and uh, we've just started. This is our first filler coat, and uh, the color's coming along. Of course, we're going to have to put a few more on there to get the desired intensity, but uh, we'll go ahead and let that dry for 10 minutes, and then we'll, we'll come, come right back to it. Okay, we got our first filler coat in. We're going to go for uh, filler coat two. I can't do much talking. I have to put my respirator on. So uh, just go ahead and watch. Okay, we're going to let that sit and dry for about uh, 15, 20 minutes. we got a pretty heavy coat on there, so that's going to take a little bit longer to dry. We'll be back. We're getting some, starting to build up some intensity here. That's our sec, sec, after our second coat of filler coat. Let's go ahead and shoot it one more time. Again, I won't be able to talk. So I'll have my respirator on. Okay, that filler coat there would also actually work as a uh, wet coat too, final coat, because I did get the whole thing, but 
there's a little bit of weakness in here. We're going to go ahead and hit this one more time. So we're going to put, uh, probably put a wet coat on it. And uh, probably one more coat, maybe two. And get the back here. Underneath here. Get the sides again. Get this aired out. We'll hit it with another coat. Here we're sitting with the casting uh, with two tack coats and three uh, filler coats. And now we're going to hit it with a nice heavy gloss coat. Make sure that the thing is in completely wet after we've put this last coat on. completely wet. Now we'll go ahead and let that sit and dry and we're finished. Here we go. We just got the casting out of the oven. Two hours at 170 degrees. Uh, it's all cured and ready to go back together. I'll move it around here a little bit. And you can see the shine come through. That's what makes SpectraFlame SpectraFlame cars is the bare metal shines through. That's the uniqueness about them. And the Redline Shop paint, urethane based paint, especially design colors with hardener is just amazing stuff. You cannot you cannot chip this stuff. Um, and you don't have to clear coat it either. That's a great thing about it. So stick around to uh, watch, watch some of our other video, how-to videos and how we'll get this thing back together. You have a good day. See you later.